I am expecting to know about VPNs, virtual private networks, and some of the claims that VPN adverts make are wrong. Tom Scott is a YouTuber with around 2 million subscribers who discusses and specializes in computer security. I always enjoyed his video, especially those on computer file. He recently made a very interesting video titled, This video is sponsored by Blank VPN. We all probably know that this is a reaction to the NordVPN hack. I wanted to make a video to elaborate on some of the statements that Tom made in his video and how those actually work. Let's just jump into it. Password stealing over Wi-Fi was a serious threat a few years ago. Someone could run an ARP spoofing attack, make their computer pretend to be the network hub, and steal every plain text password that went through that Wi-Fi network. It required very little technical knowledge. Okay, let's elaborate on this a little bit. I want to go to Bank of America. I'm connected to Starbucks, and there's like 30 shady people connected to the same public unencrypted network. So what, what will happen here? If I'm going to go to bankofamerica.com, well, I'm going to ask, ask the question, where is Bank of America? What's the IP address? That's a DNS unencrypted UDP request. So everybody can sniff that. There's obviously the how of how they can sniff that. But the router knows that you're going to Bank of America. That's it, right? You get back the IP address and let's start there. So let's try to illustrate that with a picture. So this is the shady public Wi-Fi. This is you. This is some other three shady people. And this is where you want to connect to, right? Say this is Bank of America. And what do you, what do you want to do? And this is like a connection to the public Wi-Fi, right? This is what it means. This is the uh, private IP address you get. This is the Starbucks gateway address, right? And this is the basically the, other, the your private IP address. And this is your Mac address. And this is very important because we're going to talk. He talked about ARP, right? ARP spoofing. So what does that mean? So what happens here? Let's say 192.168.115 will connect to 44.12.4. So the first thing we want to do, let's say I want, this is my IP address. And I want to connect to this IP address, which is like Bank of America, for example. And uh, 44124, is this in my subnet? If it is, then I can ask an ARP request and say, okay, give me the MAC address because this is how you communicate at the low level. You need the MAC address of the thing to send that information. But guess what? This is not even in my subnet, so I'm not going to bother doing an ARP request. So what's next? If it's not in my subnet, I got to tell the router, I got to tell my gateway, hey, this is someone I need to communicate to, but I think he's outside my network. Hey, take this packet and send it to him, please, or to her. So how do I send this packet to this IP address? Well, I need to know the ARP of that gateway to in order to send it the packet. You do an ARP request. If you're lucky and you have an ARP table here telling you that the MAC address of 192.168.1.1 is A, then you immediately send it. But unfortunately, let's say you don't have it. So what are you going to send is like, Hey, who has this IP address? And the router will tell you, hey, it's cool. I have that IP address. My MAC address is A. So you notice that what happened, right? Everybody got that request, right? Everybody got that request is 192.168.1.1, right? But those guys are good actors. They said, no, it's not me, son. It's not me, son. It's not me, son. It's not me, son. And this guy said, it is me, son. So what they will do is ensure it's just like, hey, all right, I got the MAC address. I'm going to send you the request. Take that packet. And then the router will take that packet and send it to you. So what Tom was talking about here is the bad actor case where... So this is one approach of doing spoofing, essentially, right? So when you decide to ask the question, who has this IP address, 192.168.1.1, you can send it. But this guy, if they replied before the router, like if they are fast enough, the reply says, hey, that's actually, that's me. 192.168.1.1 is me. Send me your beautiful data. So what will happen here is this guy will think, oh, it's MAC address D who has the gateway. All right, I'm going to send you the information. Anything goes through this guy and this guy will pretend to be the router and will make the request to the actual router and the router will make that request. Quiet very little technical knowledge, or they could compromise the hub itself and look at all the traffic that was going through it. But you know what else sends data through an encrypted tunnel? Every single website with a padlock in the browser, 
every iPhone app since 2016, every Android app since 2018, anything that sends any sort of personal data now uses a trusted encrypted tunnel, HTTPS, that padlock. And unless you're using websites or apps from the past, if anyone tries to intercept your data, it won't work. That is absolutely true. Even if someone pretends to be the router in order to establish the TCP, the, final, the, the connection between you and the final destination, you can establish what we call the TLS connection, which we talked about. I'm gonna reference the video here. Once you agree on a symmetric key between you and Bank of America, they can sniff everything they want. They won't, they won't see anything because everything will be encrypted. Any piece of data you send is going to be encrypted. That's what Tom's talking about here. Right? If it's HTTPS, then it's not possible. Now, what Tom did not mention here is if that bad actor did a man in the middle attack and pretended to be Bank of America by providing you a valid certificate from Bank of America somehow, which happened before, then you will have no clue that this happened to you. It can happen. You have to forge a certificate that is valid. And if you forge a certificate that is not valid, you're going to get the message that you're seeing right here. Potential error. Okay. Because you can obviously fake a Bank of America certificate, which has the public key of Bank of America. But you will not be able to the browser will warn the user and, and they will give them this message this connection is not private something is off this certificate is expired something is weird it's up to you client do you want to communicate or not you better click no <laughs> okay in that case right if that's especially if you're connected through a wi-fi that is public right someone could have done this it's not easy but it can be done right so i just wanted to add to tom's point there okay Plus, a VPN stops your internet service provider spying on what you're doing online. Now, that is true to an extent. Yes, without a VPN, your internet service provider, your ISP, can see what domain names you've been connecting to. There can be very good reasons. That's a very interesting point. That, thank God he blurred that part. Because he, they can only see the domains. And what? why? Because of DNS. When you make a DNS UDP request, you say, hey... No, there is no connection, right? YouTube.com, what's its IP address? Okay, and when you make that request, it's, a, it's an unencrypted request that will get routed. And obviously, any request you make goes through your ISP to make sure you have internet or not. And they can, as, they can only look at requests that are unencrypted, especially DNS. They are very light, unencrypted stuff. So they can see that, oh, hmm. Oh, you made a request to all oh, go to this website because you want to get the IP address, right? That's very visible to the ISP, okay? So they can see where you want to go. Can they say which page? Absolutely not. If you make a get request to youtube.com slash the 64-bit ID that I have, this is part of the HTTP packet. It's part of the HTTP header. Well, the HTTP header is part of the header content, which is data, which is encrypted with HTTPS if you're using TLS, right? It's encrypted. So they cannot see it unless they do man in the middle. Kazakhstan government did try to do that. They actually forced ISP to install an, a terminating proxy to terminate TLS, and they forced people to install their certificate on their machines so, so they don't get this error that Tom was put in this video, right? Or maybe your government is planning to introduce an ill-advised and often delayed block on adult content and you want to work around it. ISPs can block because they know their domain. Hey, you're going to that domain. No, sorry, no, you cannot go. So the, what they do essentially is like they even give you uh, the DNS request wrong. They block that DNS request or they make sure that they have a list of IP addresses they can block that stuff if they want to okay so they can block that stuff he mentioned also tom mentioned about something that vpn can protect you from your isp not knowing where you're going okay so the isp obviously we we determine that they know in which domains you visited but they don't know which pages which content that's all reasonable metadata does give away a lot of information Wanting to keep that private is a fair idea. 
But that's not what a lot of the VPN ads are implying. They're implying that your ISP can read the content of your messages. And again, if there's a padlock in the browser or if you're using a modern app, that's not true. That is correct. Obviously, if you're using a TLS connection, they cannot read it. The ISPs cannot read it unless, obviously, they install a terminating proxy and they force you to install a certificate on your machine. They cannot read Jack. And if you do use a VPN, all you're doing is changing who can see that metadata. Your ISP can't anymore, but the VPN company can. That's a very important point, okay? So if you're using a VPN, your ISP can no longer know which domains you visited. And so as a result, you can open any site you want because the DNS request can go anywhere you want, right? They go, they, essentially, you're creating a tunnel between you and the VPN. The ISP knows that, hey, that's the last thing you want to connect to, which is right, NordVPN, right? And then after you connect to NordVPN, you establish a kind of, like almost like a TLS connection between you and the NordVPN, maybe something else, right? And then you start shoving data inside that NordVPN, unpack this data, and then look at it and they say, okay, oh, you want to go to YouTube.com? Wink, wink, let's go there, right? And then we'll make the request on your behalf. Obviously, ISPs do not know anymore because you just tunneled it. The ISP know that you're connected to a VPN, by the way. They're not dumb. Right, so they know that because at their end of the tunnel, they have to look at that metadata to work out where to send your traffic to. But maybe that's worth it for them. And besides, a good VPN doesn't keep any logs on who you're talking to. It is a brave move for a VPN not to keep any logs, given that if it's true, their service will inevitably be used for a lot of really awful illegal stuff. So what what does Tom mean by logs here? And logs, obviously. In they're not seeing your data. VPN cannot see your data, again, because you're always connected to the final destination to establish a TLS connection, so they will generate that random ephemeral key, and then you will generate the random ephemeral key, and then finally you can agree on a symmetrical key that you can... Nobody in the middle can do anything about it unless, again, the TLS is terminated. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna reference a video about the TLS termination here, if you're interested. Go there, check it out. Some do claim that. Some have even brought in independent auditors to try and prove that they don't keep any logs, and you can't have 100% certainty of that. <laughs> we actually forgot to talk about the logs, right? They cannot do the data, but they, the only thing they, they can know is which domains you visited. That's it, through the DNS request. That's it. If DNS were encrypted, we don't have this problem, but it's almost impossible to encrypt DNS requests. These things are public. If you're applying an assassination and your priority is absolutely covering your tracks, then Sure, I guess a VPN might be worth it. I mean, I didn't understand that point really. It's like, how do you plan an assassination? And what websites do you visit to plan an assassination? Jeez, that's the only site you visit. What? It was like, how to kill people.com. What, what do you, I don't know. It's like, if you want to cover your track planning an assassination, you probably would, you, want to, you don't want to do it online. You want to go, you want to go to Lowe's or, 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 or Home Depot or something. I don't know, probably you don't want to do this stuff online, but I, I don't know, like, even if you're publicly browsing, if the word domain name doesn't give shady information, if you buy everything from legitimate, you can still plan an association, probably I should encourage people to do that. And if you use a VPN, you can connect to streaming services around the world as if you were in those countries. And that's the real reason a lot of people use VPNs. I go to China or somewhere else that blocks off access to a lot of websites. That's a fair reason. Do you want to watch another country's streaming content or download just enormous amounts of BitTorrents without being tracked? Those are valid uses of VPNs, even if they are legally questionable. It's just that great for pirating stuff and getting around the law is the sort of marketing that gets a company in trouble. And we stop bad people stealing your passwords is the sort of marketing that scares people into buying something that they might want. That's true. So if you're a person in China and you want to watch Netflix, which is blocked, I assume, you want a VPN into a network that is in America. And then from that network, we, the VPN company, will make a request on your behalf, sir. And then we make a request and we do your thing, right? We're going to make a request. So we don't know that you are, we know you are from China as a VPN company, but we got you, son, okay? But again, China can actually block VPN companies. They can do it if they want to. They can prevent you from VPNing, right? 
it's it's not hard for them. The IP address can give where are you from. It's it's a very simple process to know the, to geolocate your IP address to a, a location. All right, guys. So that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the I'm gonna reference the full video for Tom here. So go go check it out. I'm gonna see you on the next one. Hope you enjoy this kind of content. A little bit different. I I'm kind of. Uh, elaborating on someone else's video. I never done this before. So if you enjoy this video, you want to do to to see more of that, hit that like button, leave a comment. If you don't enjoy it, that's fine. I'm just trying things out on this channel. Uh, I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.